Thank you for the time that you are investing watching this video from Victory Church. We hope that you will enjoy it. Hello dear friend, I am Giancarlo, the founding pastor of Victory Church in Odessa, Texas. Today, March 26, 2019, we are going to start our Bible study, the Bible Timeline. Today, in Genesis chapter 34, lesson number 69, the title is True Revenge. And we read the scripture in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. One day, Dina, the daughter of Leah and Jacob, went out to see the women of that place. She was seen by Shechem, the son of Hamor, the Hevite, who ruled that area. Shechem took Dina and raped her, but he was so attracted to her that he fell in love and began expressing his feelings to her. He told his father, please get this girl for me so that I can marry her. Imagine that. Jacob learned that Shechem had done this very bad thing to his daughter. But all his sons were out in the fields with the cattle. So he did nothing until they came home. Then Shechem's father Hamor came out to talk with Jacob. In the fields, Jacob's sons heard the news about what had happened. They were very angry because Shechem had brought shame to Israel by raping Jacob's daughter. They came in from the fields as soon as they heard about the terrible thing Shechem had done. But Hamor talked to Dina's brothers and said, My son Shechem wants Dina very much. Yeah, right. Please let him marry her. This marriage will show we have a special agreement. Then our men can marry our women and your men can marry our women. You can live in the same land with us. You will be free to own the land and to trade here. Shechem also talked to Jacob and to Dina's brothers and said, Please accept me. I will do anything you ask me to do. I will give you any gift you want if you will only allow me to marry Dina. I will give you anything you ask, but let me marry her. Jacob's son decided to lie to Shechem and his father because Shechem had done such a bad thing to their sister Dina. The brothers said to them, we cannot allow our sister to marry you because you are not yet circumcised. That would bring us shame. But we will allow you to marry her. If you do this one thing, every man in your town must be circumcised like us. Then your Mary can marry our women. Our men can marry your women. Then we will become one people. If you refuse to be circumcised, we will take Dina away. This agreement made Hamor and Shechem very happy. Shechem was very happy to do what Dina's brothers asked. Shechem was the most honored man in his family. Hamor and Shechem went to the meeting place of their city. They spoke to the men of the city and said, these people want to be friends with us. We want to let them live in our land and be at peace with us. We have enough land for all of us. We are free to marry their woman and we are happy to give them our women to marry. But there is one thing that all our men must agree to do. They must agree to be circumcised as they are. If we do this, we will become rich from all their cattle and other animals. We should make this agreement with them so that they will stay here with us. All the men who heard this in the meeting, in the meeting place, agreed with Hamor and Shechem and every man was circumcised at that time. Three days later, the men who were circumcised were still sore. 
Two of Jacob's son, Simeon and Levi, knew that the men would be weak at this time. So they went to the city and killed all the men there. Dinah's brothers, Simeon and Levi, killed Hamor and his son Shechem. Then they took Dina out of Shechem's house and left. Jacob's sons went to the city and stole everything that was there because of what Shechem had done to their sister. So the brothers took all their animals, all their donkeys, and everything else in the city and in the fields. The brothers took everything those people owned. They even took their wives and children. But Jacob said to Simeon and Levi, You have caused me a lot of trouble. All the people in this place will hate me. All the Canaanites and the Perizzites will turn against me. There are only a few of us. If the people in this place gather together to fight against us, I will be destroyed and all our people will be destroyed with me. But the brothers said, Should we let these people treat our sister like a prostitute? They were wrong to do that to our sister. Wow, what a chapter, my friend. What a chapter. I would like to start the tale just to say this to you, that throughout the history of humankind, we know that women have suffered a lot. It's a fact. Well, we know that not just in the Middle East, but Africa, here in North America, in Central America, in South America, in Asia, in, in Europe, throughout many, many years, women have suffered injustice. Unfortunately, it's a fact. Still today, women are being disrespected and mistreated. And it's a fact also that some men don't get it. Some men even today keep thinking that they can do anything they want to women. And they think some of these men that are not clear in their minds, that are abusive, not just verbally, they think that they can just take the, one, the body of a woman and use it like it was just anything else. And that is absolutely wrong. In this passage, we know that uh, this guy, Shekim, said that after raping Dina, suddenly he was falling in love with her. He, he wanted to marry her. That is absolutely wrong. If a man is interested in a woman, should have a process to get to know each other, to become friends, getting acquainted with everything that this woman likes and does. And of course also get familiar with the family and friends to gain their trust and confidence, to show that there is a decent man. So there is no difference actually today with some men that don't get it, that they just think that if they like a girl, they can just go and take her. And uh, no, we, we cannot accept something like that. What would you feel if it was your daughter, this uh, particular Dina? What would you do if you get to know that there is a guy who liked her but eventually took her into a date and raped her? What would you do? What would you do if that is your sister? You see? That is something absolutely unacceptable. And how can this man, Shechem, said, I want to marry her now. Now I love her. I want her. W what is that? And we know that there are people that get into obsessions with certain individuals. And then is when they go crazy. And we know that many individuals, even today, they are obsessed with certain people, with certain girls, or girls with certain guys, and they really get into trouble with the law, 
with relatives. They, they lose their jobs. They, they get lost into that obsession because they think that they have the right to have that person for, for themselves. It is sad. And we understand that everyone wants to feel loved and have somebody to love, but there are limits in everything. And this is unacceptable. That's not the right way to do life. That is not the right way to find someone to love by forcing a person, especially to go to bed and doing this kind of things. That is unacceptable. So my first question to you is, are, are you, do you feel that are you able to forgive and forget a criminal action like this? You know, it is hard to say, oh sure, you know, it's the Christian thing to do just to forgive and forget. You know, it, it is easy to say that. But would you? I cannot picture that. Somebody doing something like that to a woman that I care for in my family or my friends and just say, oh, it's okay. I don't worry about it, man. You are forgiven. We, we, for, we already forgot that incident. No, it's not that simple. Certainly in the eyes of God, we must forgive. Certainly it's healthy for everybody involved in situations like that to try to forget those events. But there has to be something done about it. Because this kind of injustices, you just can't ignore it and say, well, you know, it is what it is. There is nothing that we can do about it. No, no. There, there has to be done. Certain things must be done when there is injustice. Because it's the right thing to do. Especially when it's, when it's about women being raped. There has to be something to do. And we need to defend our women. Like we defend our kids. Like we defend the elderly. And uh, in this particular scenario, Jacob's sons, they decided to, to take justice on their own hands. And they wanted to go in an act of revenge. And you heard, and you read probably with me the passage, what exactly is what they did. <laughs> they tricked those guys and said, yeah, sure. We are going to now be friends. Don't worry about it. Just get circumcised and we're going to get you. That is exactly what they planned and they did. But I think it is out of proportion. Sometimes we understand that people feel the need to have some revenge. But in this particular case, it was absolutely out of proportion. Because it was one woman that was raped by one man. And here, they killed everybody. And took all the women and all the children. There, there is no proportion in this act of revenge. I'm not suggesting that revenge is a good thing to do. What I am saying here is that there must be something to be done. We have to do something when there is about uh, injustices and things like this. But in all cases, we have to do it according with the law. We cannot take the law in our hands. There are procedures to be done. There is a judicial system that we can go to and present our cases into the courthouse system because there is the place where we should handle situations like this. On the other hand, I think that we need to think intelligently. How can we stop wrong things in our communities? I am totally in favor of utilizing the law to protect our communities. It is the right thing to do and we need to vote for people that will help us to keep our community safe. But in all cases it is there and through laws that everything must be done intelligently to stop injustices. In the name of the Lord, our God, we must do something to protect our women, our children, our, our elderly, 
to defend the weak, to defend the poor. But everything must be in a fair way as well. Sometimes we feel like we gotta do something, like an act of revenge for the wrong things some others are doing. It's understandable, but we, we need to stop those feelings and try to think of what is the right thing to do and be smart and intelligent of doing things right to bring justice into our communities. Today, we trust in God that He will guide us to do what is right, whether it's in your family, whether it's in your company, in your workplace, or even if it's within certain injustices where you are. You need to keep trusting in God because He is the one who will help you to do things right. From Victory Church, I wish you a beautiful week. Keep trusting in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you. We appreciate so much your time invested with Victory Church in Odessa, Texas.